So my DNA was all over that house. So I stopped working for that old man and the old man was had was holding company that had already stolen from him before um that was i didn't i didn't i didn't take the money or the firearm i don't like firearms and stuff like that i that's why i had the alfred plea we are about to watch the parole hearing of a woman who was given a 10-year sentence all but suspended except for 30 months now she was accused of stealing over thirty thousand dollars plus silver coins and a weapon from someone who she was supposed to be taken care of. Now, what's particularly interesting about this hearing is I think the way that she comes into it, thinking that she can just lie and lie and lie. At least that's my opinion. Now, let's see how the parole board handles this and if they mm, hold her accountable. I'll unpack it with the details of her crime at the end. All right, good morning. My name is Parole Officer Boyce for today's Friday, October 18th, 2024. And this is the hearing of the Connecticut Board of Pardons and Parole. Following board members are present this morning and by stating their names on the record, certify they have reviewed all statutory required documents and available for information in preparation of this hearing. Good morning, Ms. Norton. I'm Jennifer Zaccanini. Deborah Smith Palmieri. Robert Sazowskis. Can you please Hi. state your name and inmate number for the record? Leah Norton, 396-353. Thank you. This hearing is being conducted in consideration of the parole application for Leah Norton, inmate number 396-353. She is serving a sentence of 10 years, suspended after two and a half years with three years of probation. The larceny first, stealing a firearm, illegal operation of a motor vehicle under the influence of drugs or alcohol, failure to appear second, and violation of probation in assault third as the underlying offense. As of today, records reflect the parole eligibility date of October 14, 2024. There is no victim input in this case. There is an offender accountability plan. It has been reviewed and shows that the offender has completed anger management and tier four. Utilizing the Wind of Speeds Assessment, one of the offender's overall score for recidivating falls within the moderate range. Ms. Norton, this is your opportunity to tell the board why you believe you should be granted parole. You may begin. Okay, well, um, uh, I actually wrote something because I have memory loss yeah. issue, but it's okay. I'm just, I wasn't prepared for this, but um, I'm just going to let you know from my heart. Um, I do believe that I am ready to go home because um, I've changed so much since I've been here um, in the best ways possible. Um, I never thought I'd be saying this, but I'm actually really glad that I came here. Um, I'm a completely different person than I was from when I walked through those doors. Uh, I've grown. I've through uh, the anger management classes that I've gone to. Um, I've learned not just how to control my anger and but so much more like just how I want to live my life. You know what I mean? And um, through the Marilyn Baker program, um, I've, I learned that I am, I'm worth, I'm worth all the things that I wanted to do that I thought I couldn't do. And I can do all those things. Um, and I have a, I have a plan for what I want to do now when I get out. And I also have a backup plan. Um, I am nervous, so I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, take your time. I'm very nervous. <laughs> um, I I believe that um, I've had a lot of time to think about what I've done, and um, you know, I I um, I'm not the same person that I was when I when I did the things that I've done. I'm not. I'm really not. Um, you know, I I've grown from the, all the mistakes that I've made a lot. And um, I wouldn't say that I have like regrets, but um, I believe everything happens for a reason, even all the hardships and stuff like that. So, um, you know, everything, you know, wrong that I've done and everything that I've gone through, 
I had to go through that in order to to be who I am today, you know, unfortunately, but I'm I'm absolutely actually kind of glad that that all happened too, you know. So, um I'm I'm actually in love with I love myself now. I never loved myself before. And um I learned I fell in love with myself in the Marilyn Baker program. I was like, "Oh my god, this is great." <laughs> you know. Um I I am going to keep up with my meetings and stuff when I get out. Um I did that before when I was on the right track, um, when I was on the outside. And um, I, I'm gonna get more involved in that again when I get out. Um, I'm moving to a completely different area and changing everything. And um, I've already mended all of my, all of my relationships with my family and my son. My son is 16, he's a football player. Um, I've never missed a game. You know, and now I've I've missed games, and that's huge to me. You know, and him, and we're like this. You know, so um, that means a lot to me to to be back in his life. And um, you know, that's. I mean, I don't. I'm so nervous. I wish I I I had something that sounded better, but that's really just just from my heart. Okay. You know. Yeah. Where is the statement that you prepared? It's at, it's at my dorm. <laughs> Where are you coming from? Um, North dorm on the east okay. side. Yeah. Did, so did you not know you were coming into your parole hearing? No, I was just at a and Medline <laughs> when they called me here. You didn't know what day your parole hearing was? No. Huh. I had no idea. That happened. Huh. They okay. didn't tell me. Nobody told me. All right, well, you did a great job and hold on to that statement anyway, because I'm sure it contains all of this information and more and you can refer it back to it, right? It does. Yeah. All right, we do have questions for you. And when we're Absolutely. done with our questions, we'll deliberate amongst ourselves and give you our decision. Okay. Okay. We'll begin with my colleague, Ms. Palmieri. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, Ms. Ms. Norton, I appreciated all of your comments in your opening statement. I, th I thought, um, they provided some insight into, into the change that you've done. So today, you know, our decision is to determine your suitability for right. release to the community. And, you know, we, we're not going to retry the case, but I do want to kind of clarify a few things. Okay. So you are charged with, you are um, serving a sentence for larceny in the first degree and the theft of the firearm. And you, admit that you were involved in in the larceny and the theft of the firearm yes okay because uh, there seemed to be some disconnect about whether or not you took responsibility for it or not well, not the firearm <laughs> not the firearm part that you're and the, you're taking for the lot but you pled guilty to both well it was a i pled for the um i'm sorry the Alfred plea. So I pled like guilty, but I don't believe that I'm I'm not believe like admitting to it all the way like that. I did it did do it. I didn't know if you were asking like if I say that I did it or if I'm if I what I pled to. Sorry. <laughs> well, a, a little bit of both. Right. Okay. So yeah. there was, you know, you were arrested for the larceny. There was DNA evidence that connected you to it. Uh, yes. And then there's the theft, the firearm is also had gone missing. Well, I t I was taking care of the old man where the um the money and the ar firearm got was missing. So my DNA was all over that house. So I stopped working for that old man and the old man was had co was holding company that had already stolen from him before um that was i didn't i didn't i didn't take the money or the firearm i don't like firearms and stuff like that i that's why i had the alfred plea because i didn't want to keep coming to court for the court runs and i was just like can i just can is there any way i can because i was tired of the court runs basically and it was just it was just stringing on and on and on you know what i mean so um basically i wanted to plead something that because i didn't want to say that i didn't want to plead guilty because i didn't, wasn't guilty you know what i mean but i wanted to plead but i wanted to get this over with i was like how do i get it over with 
okay. That I, I, so I didn't I, have to keep having court runs. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm hearing what you're saying. It's yeah. just, it's a little contradictory to the beginning right. of your statement, which said that you take responsibility. Because um, the, the other stuff that I've done, I, the other stuff that I did was, was I did do the um, assaults and stuff like that. I did that. I did that. The violate, you're right. And the violation. Yeah, I violated my probation. Yes. Okay. All right, and and the, yeah. the driving under the influence, but yeah. you're so. But what you are telling us today is that you pled under the Alfred plea on right. the larceny and the theft of the firearm, but right. you still say that you did not have any involvement in it, despite right. the fact that they said that your DNA was on the lock and the yeah. com and the paper with the combination on it. Yeah, I mean, my my DNA was everywhere in that plate in that house. Yeah. I've I've touched I've I used to sort his papers out for him. He's he handed me he's he's given me locks and stuff like that before, like to keep for myself. You know, he, we've gone through locks and stuff like that. Like it wasn't that out of the blue for me. You know, for when I, I wasn't that surprised for my DNA to be on that. Uh, I, and I there was also information in the police report that said. You know, you were working for him, staying there at times, yeah. and yes, your DNA would be throughout the house. Yeah. But it was specifically on the piece of paper that had the combination to the lock, and specifically yeah. on the lock itself. Yeah, if I touched yeah. the combination to the lock, I don't remember touching the piece of paper with the combination on it. And I, I stand by that. I don't remember touching the piece of paper. I've touched so many big pieces of paper. It's a big plea to plead out to a larceny one in theft of a firearm when you're telling us today that, you know, you still say you had no involvement in either one of those charges. I know, but I didn't. <laughs> I really didn't. I stand by what I said. I did not. Okay. It, there was well, other, it could have been other people. It definitely could have been other people. There were, he was hanging out with people that had robbed him and stuff like that already before. Nobody looked, even looked at them. They just looked at me because it was, it was, it was easier for them. I think it seems to me that, you know, a lot of why you were looked at was for a variety of reasons. You had purchased large items with cash that made, you know, a television. There's information that you purchased the television. Uh, I was working. I, I was working somewhere else. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I was working. I, I had another job. I was a painter also. So, and, and the TV costed two hundred dollars. Like, <laughs> okay. and that's the only cash thing that I spent. Well, I I'm just was hearsay. Providing information about what yeah. was in the information that we had to review for today's hearing. Yeah, and know. you know, so there was that, and there was n nobody else's DNA um, is associated with those particular items. In meaning, the piece of paper with the combination to the to the lock and the lock itself, it was yeah. only yours. Did they test anybody else's DNA? There was a few that they tested. Yes. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I don't know, have an like, answer for that. All right, and like I said, those are you know larceny in the first degree. It's a it's a class B felony. It's a very serious charge. You know, theft of a firearm and an incredibly serious charge. I I understand completely. I do. Okay. All I right. Really so why do. don't we why don't we move forward a little bit then? Okay. Um, and because I made a few notes about some things you said in your opening statement. Um, you know, we hear often that jail changes people. You know, they're so happy they're Gary. They they were incarcerated. It kind of puts a, a stop gap to the chaotic life that they're living in the community. Yeah. Um, you did say a few things that, you know, you have changed, you learned a lot. And I do think that that's probably very true. You look much better today than the photographs that we had when you first entered York. Um, very, very different. So congratulations on on the improving you. just your whole self. Thank you. And but I I am a little concerned when you talk so um, much about the Marilyn Baker program and all that it's done for you. 
because yeah. you did not get a great evaluation from it. Um, it said did not show much growth with her recovery and um, that, you know, you struggled with homework, doing some of the assignments, all of that part of the, of the treatment. So why do you think the counselor would write that? It's very unusual, I have to tell you, that we see have, comments like that. I have ADHD. I have a really bad, I have, I also have um, CTE, which is a TBH. It's a brain, it's a brain, a TBI, it's a brain injury. So homework and, and even like, simple paperwork and stuff like that it's really hard for me to to do I, even in even before i had the brain injury um in school i was in special ed classes so i tried to explain that to them and they didn't really they didn't help me <laughs> with that until i started showing problems with the homework and I was like I told you I was having problem with the homework and you know and then after that they kind of started helping me with it and my and then I never missed one day of homework again after that I never got into trouble in the Marilyn Baker program not one time I never got um I got one ticket since I've been in jail in general even in the Marilyn Baker program and that was for a nose ring that I forgot I had because it was lifted upward in my nose and you can't see it um and that's it you know i i okay. kept myself never... okay well i, I want to circle back just yeah. just a little bit yeah so i i want to go back to this comment didn't show much growth in her recovery so let's put the homework yeah. issue aside because i oh, i read yeah. that you struggled with your homework and yeah. then they put you on a plan to to work to yeah. improve in that area, which you right. seem to have done that. But yeah. then when it's all said and done, you know, the counselor didn't think that you made much improvement with your recovery or your growth. What what do you why do you think that that was her impression or his impression? I think that's because I didn't um I didn't overextend myself like some of the girls did um to like to do like extra things and like help out all so much and stuff like that because there were some girls that there were a lot of girls that did that you know what i mean and um i just did kind of like what i had to do and and that's and that's it you know but i also um try to keep in mind i struggle i'm also at the same time i'm struggling with depression i'm still trying to get on the right beds and all this other stuff at the same time you know and it was really hard for me but i still did it you know and they didn't they didn't give me that impression at all when i was there um and they never they never spoke to me about me not doing so well there you know they didn't give me that impression at all I had a good I had a good standing with my counselor. That's weird. Yeah, because, uh, <laughs> you know, that. overall, overall, they gave you a good. I mean, I, I can't tell you how infrequent we see that most of the time people, you know, they, they get excellence um, yeah. for their program participation and right. for initiative. They they only marked you as as fair. So I yeah. can see by how you just described that you kind of just did what they required yeah, of you. I you didn't did. put forth any extra. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you have done treatment programs before. Uh, yeah. There's some information you were in one prior to your incarceration. So tell me what is so different for you now? Um, I'm just, I, I'm just over the lifestyle that I was living. You know, um, before I wasn't, I hadn't, I didn't have, like, I hadn't had it. Like, I didn't feel like I just had enough. You know what I mean? I, I didn't feel like I, I'm just over it. I want to, I'm just beyond done. Like, I feel like I'm, I've, I've outgrown it now at this point, pretty much. Like, not like, not so much outgrown it, but I'm trying to figure out a way to, perfect way to describe it. Like, um, I just, I'm just over it. I want no parts of it anymore, of of the whole, entire lifestyle of the of the of all of it and everything that comes with it. I'm just so over it. And I have, I have, a, I have a cosmetology license. I have things that I've done to better myself that I can put to use, and that I have an opportunity right now 
to put that to use. You know what I mean? I don't have to, I don't have to go back to that right now. Okay. So, so let's talk about, you know, how, how it'll be in the community for you. When you talk about um, that, you're going to go back to meetings and, and live a sober lifestyle. How do you see that for yourself? You were, were you at one point attending meetings in the community and then yeah. that all fell by the wayside? Yes. Okay. Um, Why? Yeah. Um, people, places, and things, really, I would, um, get involved, like, and, and also, it would be like a death, like, death, it, it wouldn't come for me and my family, it wouldn't just come with one person, it would come with, like, multiple people at one time, like, in, in one summer, I had, like, eight people die uh, around me, you know, and it was the closest people to me, and I tried to stay clean, I tried my hardest, and I, and, the last the last death i just i relapsed and i was like trying so hard but i also wasn't going to meetings and i wasn't i looked back at it and i was like well what was i doing besides crying you know what i mean i wasn't really going to meetings and all that other stuff too you know i wasn't trying to do things to help myself but now i know what to, now i know that you know i can't just sit there i have to fight i have to actually fight for for what I want, you know what I mean. I, me specifically, I have to fight for 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 my life because I come with an addiction. So I have to fight harder. Through well, you're, and you, one of the other um, charges you have before us today is your violation of probation. So you yeah. weren't going to probation. You weren't going to treatment. You were giving them positive drug tests. You have a tampering with with a drug yeah. test. I so missed one. Yeah, there, okay. there was a lot of help for you out there. Why do you think yeah. that you couldn't take advantage of it? Um, I missed one. I missed one. Um, sorry, one meeting with my um, my not parole officer. My um, probation probation officer. Thank you. <laughs> I missed one meeting with my probation officer. Um, and I called and I had COVID and that was, um, that was the last time I heard before I actually got, got, um, this charge with them. Um, I called and I said, I, I'm gonna, I have COVID. Usually if I was sick, they didn't want me to come, but it's, I said I had COVID. It was the day before I was like, do you want me to, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to show you the email? And oh, she never okay. got back to me. And then I did have tampering. Yes, I did. Okay. So you you were ill, you didn't go. It's hard for me, and without going back to the violation report, it's hard to right. think I that know. they violate you for just missing one office visit. You know, right. I tampered and, with this stuff too. I did right, yeah. and then you and you didn't go to treatment. Maybe you just didn't show up for treatment at all. No, I don't remember that part. You had an intake appointment that you didn't attend. Uh, for probation, and then you tested, you had all the positive tests, a tampering, and that you missed appointments with your treatment provider, and you were discharged due to lack of attendance. So maybe you were referred to treatment and didn't go at all? I don't, I don't that remember. Sound familiar? Sorry. Well, they would have sent you to treatment yeah. if you were testing positive, and certainly that was part of your, your history, it was your substance abuse and your alcohol use. Yeah, I um I don't think they sent me to treatment. They sent me to treatment after I was testing positive. If it says they did, I think that's right, obviously, but I just don't remember I don't remember it. Sorry. I don't remember that part. So you you if you were to be granted parole today, you'd have parole for about 13 months. Then you have three years of probation to follow that. Um uh, you know, how do you think that's gonna go? How do you see that working for you? Good. Well, I, I need a little better than good. What else? You know, with flying colors, it would work great because I would do everything that I had to do in order to make my probation, in order to make whatever I have to do, I'm going to make sure that I do it. Even if I don't have a car, I'll make sure I take a bus. I have, I have no, no, I do not do not want to use, I'm not going to use, I have no intention on using. Um, that part is not going to be a part of my life at all. 
I have positive people surrounding me, um, people that are that know me, people that are a positive influence on me, and people that know any signs and stuff like that of of any you know negativity when it comes to using and stuff like that, or if I'm having bad thoughts that I've spoken to. You know what I mean? And I have a plan. Okay. All right, so it would be happy, it would be helpful to hear about your plan too. You are also participating in the MAP program now? Yes. And is this your first time participating in a program like that? No. Okay. I've, I've, go is, ahead, that sorry. Part of your, is that part of your plan for the community as well? Um, yes, I eventually want to get off of methadone, but I'm not in a rush. I don't want to rush things. Um, I'm on a very low dose and um, it seems to be working fine. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm kind of just going off of how I feel when I, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm with what I'm doing in my life at that, at the time. So you, you mentioned a few times, you have a lot of good people for support in the community. Mm -hmm. Uh, I knew part of the report that we have for us today says that you're you're hopeful to work with your sister and open up a hair salon. Yes. Um, my sister, my older sister pretty much raised me. Um, she is a great influence on me. She just finished cosmetology school. I went first. Um, and she, while I was incarcerated, she decided to go. So. We talk a lot on the phone and um, she's looking at places right now um, to rent for um, to open up a, a small space for a salon and stuff like that. And it's been a dream that we've always talked about. And I just want to put everything into perspective and, and do it. <laughs> what else do you have besides your sister? Um, I have my mother. I have my kid's father and I have my girlfriend. And are these all people that you have contact with over throughout your incarceration? Yes. If you do look at uh, sobriety in the community, have, what have you I've been able to identify are relapse triggers for you that you need to be aware of? Relapse triggers for me are um, Basically, people that um, are around me that are um, intoxicated, um, I I don't I don't keep company. I won't keep company. That's intoxicated around me, or people that are using and stuff like that. Uh, even if they have friends that are using, I will. I just will be as far away from them as possible. Have you identified a sponsor, uh, somebody outside your family? that's available to you um, to go to go home. Well, not oh, I'm sorry, like a sponsor through your meetings through NA. Um, I, I know a couple of people, but I'm not in contact with them through the phone. I would have to go see them at the meeting. But I have a, a few people in mind that I don't have their numbers, <laughs> but I know they're there. When you met with the parole officer, you, you talked about uh, treatment in the community. You talked about the methadone program for a while. What else do you think you need in the community to, to live a sober, successful life? Um, I, I need to do things that um, that make me happy. I like do. I, I'm an artist. Um, I need to keep up with my art. Um, I'm a really good artist. Um, I need to keep up with stuff like that and I need to keep up with work because um, I enjoy all of that stuff. All of that stuff, it, it makes me happy to do that, you know, and as long as I keep up with that as well as go to the meetings, I should be successful, I think. I have one last question for you. So in sure. your opening statement, you said specifically that you've grown. Um, 
and you've learned a lot about yourself. What do, what do you think has been the most significant thing, um, personal growth for you? Um, you think, um, the most significant, I have, I can do anything that I want to do. I have, I have the ability to do, to, to put into motion what I want to do, anything that I want. And I know how to do it. And I, and I can feel it. Like I can, I, it's so close. I can taste it almost. And I have, and I have exactly what I need to, to, to do it, you know, like try to describe it better, but, um, I feel more capable than I've ever been more capable of everything. <clears throat> okay. And I just feel like the possibilities are just of my, of everything that I want to do are endless. Like I can do what I want to do now. And I know, and I'm I'm on the phone putting into motion what I want to do. Like I'm not just sitting there dreaming about it. I'm I'm putting it. I'm I'm making plans for when I get out. I'm hope hopefully you know like putting into motion what I want to do. So you your cosmetology license is valid. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you want to release and go to the halfway house. Yes. Okay, and what is your immediate thoughts about employment? I mean, um, your your goal is the hair salon, but what do you think you'll do right away for employment? I don't need to work in a hair salon. I'm I'm taking baby steps right now. Um, I, my goal, if I have to work at a um, Dollar Tree right now, I'll work at a Dollar Tree right now because I need to take care of myself. I need to take it slow. I'm not trying to jump into stuff too fast. Um, and that I know, I know how, I know what I need to do this time. Um, cause I'm, I'm going from the mistakes that I've made last time too. You know what I mean? From when I was clean, how I messed up. Um, I was going too fast and I was trying to bite off way more than I could chew. I need to start off slow and I need to take, not take whatever's handed to me first, <laughs> but you know, I'm 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 a lot more humble. Let's just say that I'm a lot more humble. So I'm willing to take a step by step when it comes to jobs and stuff like that. I don't need to work in a salon right away. Because okay. you you will need to work to support yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned your son also in your opening statement. Do you have contact with him since you've been incarcerated? Yeah, he's been here to visit me. And you mentioned his father as a supporter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we've never really gotten along actually for a long time, and we are now. And it's it's like a breath of fresh air. It's it's amazing. We have we co-parent very nicely now, and I'm looking forward to it big time. Ms. Norton, thank you very much. I have no additional thank questions. You. Okay, Ms. Norton. So. I had similar concerns uh, to my colleague with regards to the offenses. Yes. So we're not going to rehash the crimes, but it, it's pretty clear that you were involved in some way in these crimes. I know you deny it. We're, we're just going to agree to disagree. My bigger concern is that you appear to be minimizing and making a lot of excuses for the things that were going on in your life. And I'll explain. I will explain. Um, for you know when when my colleague was mentioning all the ways in which you violated probation you said well i missed one appointment and i did alter a specimen i have a whole list of the ways we can go through them if you'd like that you violated your probation so you minimize that one thing that you said you were going to take responsibility for are you familiar with the village yes the village you were going there for treatment while you were on probation but that wasn't the first place you went to a detox you went to an inpatient i mean probation really tried to work with you i know they sent um, you to a lot of different places and you were using the entire time i didn't say that i altered one specimen i said i altered the specimens 
Okay, like, you I looked at the specimens and you failed to report once, but that's not true either because I have a list of dates here. We could go through them all if you'd like to, but I don't see the point. And I, I don't, also don't see why probation's records would be off. You know, I mean, no, they, I they, they really did work with you. In fact, they transferred your probation to several offices because you kept moving around and then you would disappear when they tried to do a home visit or asked you to come to the office. I didn't have a place to live. I'm not making I excuses. I, I understand. I've, but when you move, yeah. it's your responsibility right. to call your probation officer and tell them where you are and you still right. show up to the appointments. And I, you know, I'm not right. trying to be harsh with you, but these things happen when you're on parole. You come right back to prison. You don't get a, a violation of probation hearing, nothing. They just come I against know. you. I so know. I want you to start taking responsibility for all of your actions. We can't pick and choose Absolutely. what we're going to take responsibility for in life, right? right? You have to right. own it. We understand Absolutely. that you have an addiction problem. We understand yes. that. The yeah. only way you're going to get the proper help is if you're honest with yourself and the people around you. Right. And you're absolutely right. I'm not, I own up to everything that I've done with the, with the probation. I'm, I'm sorry if you think that I was trying to make small of it. I promise I you, I'm not that. trying to be you were. I, I don't think okay. that you were. You couldn't even remember okay. going to treatment. I read at least three different places they sent you to treatment. Okay. Well, like I said, I have, a, not I have a brain injury, so it's right. hard for me to remember a lot of things. Like, I I'm not trying to make you're not remembering all of the details, but but, some would be nice right right i get it absolutely and you're right i am i had a i had a problem which I, I do not have a problem anymore and i am trying to make make amends for what everything that i've done and make better and be a better person yeah that's what i really am trying to do we want that for you we don't need you yeah. here we have plenty right. of business right yes right. um we want you to do better and we want to help you. We don't want to send you out there to fail and come right back, you know? So we need to know that you're ready to go out there and do the work. And we know it's difficult work, right? I don't know what it's like to be in your shoes. I will never claim to know that. I don't know, but um, it's going to be hard. If we, yeah. You know, I don't want, I also don't want you to naively think I addressed all my issues. I'm done with this. This is going to be easy. Yeah. I got this. Because no, we see I don't people think so at all. <laughs> back every day, you know? Yeah. yeah. I'm not um, coming back here. This is your first incarceration, right? This is my first, like, bid that I've done, yes. Right. Um, I've been here before, but I got bailed out. Yeah. Right, like, right when I was here, yeah. Right. And I believe you. I believe that you yeah. have changed. I can see the change in you. I, I believe that you want to do better. Um, but you need to take all the help that's given to you and i don't yeah. want you to think that parole is your enemy and they're going to be out to get you they're there to help you so I know if, you, if you do relapse or fail you don't have to alter a specimen what you have to do is tell them oh god i messed up i really need help help right. me and, and take whatever help that they can give you you know right. uh, it sounds like you do have a plan and you have some supports in place never hurts to have more supports, right? Absolutely. So build on that with more <laughs> positive supports in your yeah. life. Um, I'll, you I'll take whatever some, I can get. Yeah, and you have <laughs> taken some good programs. You've been involved in some good programs, so you, you should have gained uh, some tools. I, and I apologize if you already spoke about this, but do you have a sponsor um, when you're no. in the community? Okay. No, but I know how to get one. And I, and I, I think I know where I would have a home group at, and it would be in the same town where I plan on living. And I know I can find one anywhere, you know what I mean? Wherever, even if I was at, at a halfway house in Hartford, I can find one. Okay. Um, have you heard of the CCAR program, Recovery Coaches? Yeah, yeah. Do they visit there in, in York, at York? Yeah, I know okay. someone from there. <laughs> Okay, so any any thoughts about getting a recovery coach? I could do that, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't just an extra anything. support person and someone who really understands what you're what you're going through. I like that um, idea. You, you got an excellent evaluation from the anger management program, so I was happy to see that you uh, addressed that because obviously with your underlying offense, there there's some anger there, right? And 
Uh, was. Maybe you have <laughs> reason to be angry, but you have to learn to control it. Yeah. Um, we understand. You're you're in a newer relationship, right? Yeah. Is your partner in recovery as well? No. She doesn't do any drugs, drink, or anything. But she is on probation. What yeah. is that for? Um, I think it was driving. Okay. Driving. All right. Speaking of driving, where do we stand with your driver's license? Um, I'm not sure. I was actually asking, trying to find out about that myself. So I'm yeah. sure it was suspended, but you don't know what you have right. to do to get it back. Was it in good standing when you picked up this uh, charge? Well, the last time, the last time, the last thing that I know is before I was incarcerated, I, I paid money to open up the case and um, paid for and paid to oh, and paid um, some amount of money that I had to pay in order to get my license right. And so I paid that and then all I had to do was take the receipt to the DMV and get yeah. my actual license. That's what I all I knew, but I didn't get to take it to the DMV yet. Okay. Yeah. Well, also, sometimes they require a, a, a device in your car or something like that. Yeah. Do you know anything about that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's a process you'll have to go through. Yeah. Um, Okay. Well, I, I really do feel like you're on the right track. I have confidence that that you're not going to come back here. You have to get a legitimate job. No more of this under the table, helping people out, caring for them. You know, yeah, you can't do that. No. <laughs> you want Absolutely a legal, not. job. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. You are right. Thank you, for, thank you for speaking with me, Mr. Thank Sousa. you so much. Hi. Good morning. I just Hi. I just have one. I just want to have, I just have one question I just wanted to sure. talk about you you said that one of the reasons why you relapsed was because you were having a difficult time dealing with the death of death of people right. surrounding you but then when you talked about your triggers you, you didn't mention that so I just want to know what your plan is like because that's going to happen again so you need to have a yeah. plan in your mind about how you're going to react to that situation who you're going to call and what you're going to do so that you don't end up back you know right. in this same situation yeah. So, um, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> um, I plan on how, like I said, I plan on having a lot of people on my side surrounding me um, for when, if I do get triggered um, and the meetings, um, but I'm going to take any help that's offered to me, any extra help. And I do, I didn't even think of a C car, um, a C car person. Like that's, a great idea and i actually loved that idea when i was in the marilyn baker program i totally forgot about that until now um <clears throat> but um i'm sure that when i get out and i'm going to hear about more options that are offered to me i'm going to take whatever's offered to me as well you know what i mean um i'm i'm going to be like an open book that's how i feel right now um to to prevent that from even happening. I mean, I know that they say relapse is a part of recovery, but I mean, everybody's different. And I believe that I, I'm trying not to even relapse. Like, you know what I mean? I'm trying to prevent the relapse even. <laughs> so um, with that being said, um, keeping myself busy, um, little by little, obviously not too busy to where I lose track of my sobriety um and just going to meetings and taking whatever else is also offered to me i'm sure i'm, sure I'm going to hear of more things that are offered to me and i'm looking forward to hearing about them yeah so <laughs> i just want to make sure you understand because there's going to be stressful situations like you described with people oh, yeah, yeah. you know around you that could die but, other things could happen just be prepared for that thank you for yeah. answering my questions that's really thank all you. i have to make sure <clears throat> thank you Okay, Ms. Norton, give us a few minutes to discuss your case. You can listen to our deliberation and we'll give you our decision shortly. Okay, thank you. Just how Mary? Thank you, Madam Chair. So I, I think we all share the same concerns about the charges of themselves, but we have our documents to, to review and go by. And what we have is that she was involved. However, um, there is an underlying substance abuse issue here that it's, it has been going on for a while, seems to be the catalyst for all the, yeah. the behaviors. 
Uh, she does score at a moderate range. One of her risk and needs factors was substance abuse and mental health, which she has been addressing both since her incarceration and has plans to do it so in the community. Um, she has the, only the one disciplinary ticket. Um, she did complete the Maryland Baker program and the English management program. Uh, she does have a plan for release and need support in the community. So I would be in favor of granting discretionary role today. Thank you. I would agree with it, everything you've said. I think she's done all the work that she can do while incarcerated. Um, and it's time for her to go out there and experience all of this and put her tools to work in real life community. Uh, she does have three years of probation, but it's nice to get a, a, a head start with parole. Mr. Sasowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I, I hear the change in her voice when she's describing how she feels now and uh, that she's a different person. So I agree with both. Thank you. OK, what do you have? What do we have for conditions? On time. Um, halfway house, mental health evaluation and treatment. I wasn't sure about anger management or even to, well, anger management as a continuation for what she's already done. I had a general no contact with the victim from the assault third, yeah. an RLF, and um, a no contact with the victim in this case, which is CR. Mm -hmm. I had done, and that's all I had. I have a no driving with us, okay. uh, for officer's permission, because there was a driving under the influence. I did not have anger management. I think she's going to have enough on her plate, and she completed it inside. Okay, yeah. anything to add, Mr. Sessions, for no. conditions? Okay. No. Very good. In the matter of Leah Norton, inmate number 396353, I'll move to grant parole, and it's effective today, October 18th, 2024, with the following conditions. General no contact with RLF, no contact with your victim, CR, mental health evaluation and treatment if they deem it necessary. You'll parole to a halfway house that must abide by their rules and no driving without the express permission of your parole officer. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do you have any questions, ma'am? No, thank you. No, thank you very much. All right, keep up the good work. We wish you the best. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> okay, so I mean, the Connecticut Parole Board shows themselves to be a joke yet again, because let's be real, this Woman took zero accountability. She was p pathetically lying from the moment she steps in. Oh, yeah, I, I wrote a whole opening statement, but I forgot because I had no idea that I had a parole hearing. Ah, right? Right? And they, you know, and, and it's like, we'll go over a crime, which she is still insisting. I didn't do it. I didn't do it at all. I just I just took the offered plea because I was getting tired of going in the bus back and forth, you know. The DNA. Oh yeah, but oh every you know, like she's like actually got un uh you know, uh and then we find out now that everyone gets what like an A plus on their program did outstanding. But if you get where it's not outstanding, it's just like you did good, then that's then that means that that, you know. And, and it's it's it was just pathetic hearing. She's a liar. She's in a. She's a maybe a pathological liar. A, 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 I don't know what the right term is. An habitual liar. Just a liar. A pathetic liar. And I cannot stand liars. And it's like you, you're not helping her by by pretending or just simply believing her lies. You're not helping her. You're only reinforcing like her ability to 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 lie, <laughs> like her confidence in her lies. And it drives me nuts. Parole board, stop it. Now, you might say the only thing you could say is maybe you look, they, they don't have a choice in the matter. Um, she's basically getting out anyways. They want to get her in the halfway out of supervision. But you could have called her out. You could have called her out on the lies. You could have said, I don't believe you. You're a liar. <laughs> Stop lying. You know, even it's like all the little things, even when they brought up uh, where you're going out to your girlfriend, does she have any trouble with a lot? No, no, she has no trouble at all. Well, why is she on probation? Oh, um, uh, for driving, maybe. And it's like, oh, so maybe, I mean, like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, my gosh. So it's like, if anything, you would think that maybe it would have been for like for 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 a DUI or something. And then, but no, whatever. Who cares? Who cares? Now, what's her her? Let's just go over the crime here. Um, 
and and I know that we, we saw the new parole board member. Maybe you're not familiar with him. You know, I don't want to, but he was a he was in law enforcement for all his life. He kind of like the sheriff. Um, so so far from what I've seen from him, he seems to be pretty good. But you have the same mix. But you, you didn't get a good enough. You didn't really hear from him in this case. But I, I have gone over his bio and a couple other hearings, so I'm not going to do it again. But if you are watching him for the first time, um, yes, they have a new parole board member who is ex-law enforcement. So I think it should bring some type of toughness to these hearings, but of course not this case. Now, January 4th, the Newington woman is accused of stealing a large amount of cash, valuable silver coins, and a firearm from the home of an acquaintance in 2020. The woman was charged December 23rd with first degree larceny, third degree burglary, and stealing a firearm. She was released on 50,000 bond and is to appear in the Manchester Superior Court. Um, on October 20th, 2020, a man reported to police that he discovered 30,000 in cash and 10,000 worth of silver coins was missing from his attic. The attic uh, lock had been moved and the piece of paper containing the lock combination was crumpled up um, in his desk, the man said. A revolver and some prescription medication were missing from his bedroom too. A few days later, the man told police he suspected Norton was responsible. He met Norton in June 2020 and hired her to help with housework um, for about nine weeks. By October, the arrangement was over, but Norton had stopped by the house unexpectedly a couple of days before the theft. She could have been trying to find out when he would be home, the man suggested. Um, he additionally told police that Norton had never been in the attic, but admitted he had joked with her in the past about keeping silver there. I wonder, was she really there cleaning? On November 10, 2020, police spoke to Norton's ex-boyfriend, who said when they dated, Norton never had any money. In recent days, though, she appeared to have acquired a small fortune and was posting on Facebook about purchasing a new TV and clothes and talking about vacations to California. And she's like, oh, the TV, that was like $200. <sighs> like, she lied constantly it really bothers me how they just like from the very beginning about claiming to not knowing about our parole hearing the day of we have seen people say they didn't expect the parole hearing it came um with very little notice but not the day of and she wrote yeah okay she wrote like it doesn't even make sense it's just none of it makes any sense and they just let her go with it they just let her like say yeah okay you'll lie to us at the time, um, he was unwillingly to direct. At the time, he was unwilling to directly say Norton had committed the theft. However, in a second phone call, he said that Norton talked about committing a burglary and asked him to join. He refused and told her to move out instead. Yeah, right. When police spoke to Norton, she denied stealing anything. She did go to the Glassbury men's house at around the day of the burglary, but it was to get a legal document that she was there only for three to five minutes. It wasn't until 2021 that police were able to obtain a DNA sample from, from Norton to see if she had gone into the attic. Norton told police they shouldn't find her DNA there. <laughs> it good for the police actually doing DNA and taking this seriously, you know? A DNA analysis um, of the lock in the attic turned up three contributors, with one of them likely being Norton. An analysis of the paper where the combination was written also revealed it was highly likely Norton that touched it. Um, but no, you know, I mean, of course, she's just really honest. She's a great person. She's uh, going to do succeed. She's going to do great. Yeah. I mean, it's pathetic. Let's see her record, Sir Richard found. Um, her record, it's long. Uh, let's see. So she has... Do, 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 do. You know, they kept giving her chance after chance. So she has assault three where they gave her probation, failure to appear. She has a lot of failures to appear. Failure to appear second. Um, violation of probation. Da, 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 da. She has illegal operating under a motor vehicle. And then she has another failure to appear. Um, 2020, she has the larceny first degree. She has the death stealing the firearm. So it's not so long, I guess. You know, again, Connecticut only goes back 10 years, and the earliest crime we have is 2018. Um, but you know, the it, it's it, the problem is 
if you want to say, look, they have to give parole for whatever reason, because I guess if you want to say that, say that. But again, call someone out. Just call them out. Like, you, how are you that dumb? How are you that naive? You can't be. And and what did she actually say? She said that she said she thought it, she was being honest. The parole board member. I mean, it, how is it that these people that that do this for a living that that we could read right through it as clear as day that that she is not ready to get released. She's not being accountable. She's not taking responsibility and she's lying and playing everyone for fools. Yet the parole board can't see that. It's weird. It's just weird. Anyway, so with that, I'll let you go. So my DNA was all over that house. So I stopped working for that old man and the old man was had was holding company that had already stolen from him before um that would i didn't i didn't i didn't take the money or the firearm i don't like firearms and stuff like that i that's why i've had the alfred plea 